This is the border crossing with Mexico at San Ysidro, California, just south of San Diego. More than 75,000 people a day coming into the country at the busiest border crossing in America. Among them, smugglers. It's 621 on a Monday evening, and the man in the white sweatshirt is a smuggler. And tonight, he will be caught on tape trying to smuggle drugs into the country, methamphetamine, hidden in two plastic bottles in his shoulder bag. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. The kind of activity that will later lead candidate Donald Trump to call for tougher border security. We have some bad hombres here, and we're going to get them out. The target on this night is a high school student, 16-year-old Cruz Velasquez of Tijuana, believed to be making his very first run as a smuggler. Over the next one hour and 38 minutes, this video, now obtained by 2020, three and a half years after it happened, will show for the first time in gripping detail just how far U.S. border officers will go in an encounter that will end up as a matter of life and death on the border. 16-year-old children will do things that are very stupid. Gene Iredell is the lawyer hired by the young man's family to sue the government. Cruz was recruited, we believe, as a mule. Here, we'll give you $100 or $200 if you just take these bottles across the border. 8 to 7, Alpha 35. Whiskey 8 or Whiskey 15. The border between Southern California and Mexico is a place where U.S. agents face a culture of smuggling that no wall has ever stopped. All these squares, all these repairs that you see are where the smugglers cut the fence in order to cross migrants or drugs. The cartels have also used elaborate tunnels to go under the border, catapults to heave drugs over the border, as well as boats, even submarines, to go around the border by sea. The area has been known for generational smuggling, meaning grandfather did it, father does it, now the son is doing it. But when we met with the family of Cruz Velasquez, his parents and sister Reina, they told us he was the first in the family to be involved in any criminal activity. He wanted to finish university and then have a family. He always wanted kids. Cruz was a high school 10th grader. He had never been in trouble before, his sister told us. But she noticed a change when he started dating and got a new circle of friends. Well, maybe he wanted a little bit more money. And then he got the, some bad friends. And they say, oh, come on, it's cool. Everybody, everybody's doing it. It is now 624, and the young man expects to be able to quickly get through customs with a special border crossing pass. It's for those who regularly cross the border for work or for quick trips of a few days. But not tonight for Velasquez, to the everlasting regret of his sister. I know that my brother, he made his choice. It wasn't a good choice, I know. 641 now, and things are already going bad. Instead of a quick clearance, Velasquez is stopped at what's called the primary inspection position, where he appears nervous, and the desk officer becomes suspicious. And soon, Velasquez is escorted to what's called soft secondary for fuller scrutiny and questioning. Things are about to get worse as he comes face to face with CBP, Customs and Border Protection, officers Adrian Perignon on the right, and Valerie Baird on the left, who both will later be accused in a lawsuit of outrageous conduct that put this young man's life in jeopardy. Miss Baird, what were you taught was the role of a CBP officer at the port of entry? That we inspect passengers and conveyances and baggage and enforce immigration customs laws. Officer Perignon, you received training in controlled substances, is that right? Yes, we did. You learned what methamphetamine is? Yes. 
The methamphetamine in Cruz Velasquez's shoulder bag is just a small part of a multi-billion dollar criminal business driven by a growing demand in the U.S. for the highly addictive drug. As depicted in the television series Breaking Bad, it is a drug made or cooked from chemicals. Incredibly profitable. $672,000. All of it? No. Each. 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 704 now, and Officer Baird opens Velasquez's bag to pull out the two bottles inside. In the preceding months, CBP became aware of a new smuggling technique for methamphetamine, dissolving the powdered form in a concentrated liquid solution. You were suspicious of that, by the way, huh? Not at the time. But the video suggests otherwise, as Baird and Perrion look closer they seem to suspect something is not right. This smaller bottle is supposed to be black tea, and the larger bottle is supposed to be apple juice. And yet you can see that the liquid in the two looks exactly the same. So they know that there's something funny, there's something fishy. You handled the bottles repeatedly and looked at them repeatedly, did you not? Correct. You noted that the two bottles had a fluid that was syrupy and viscous. Right? Correct. Now the agents are about to make a fateful decision about how to handle this nervous teenager and the two suspicious bottles. At this point, if they're suspicious of what's in the bottles, the former head of internal affairs at Customs and Border Protection, James Tomchak, says officers are taught a set protocol for just such situations. If they truly suspected there was a controlled substance in the bottle, they should have conducted a field test. They have the equipment available to do a field test? Absolutely. Am I correct that at the port of entry, there are available the test kits, the reagents that you need to do tests? Yes, there is. And uh, all you had to do if you wanted to f use one was to ask? Uh, you could get one yourself. You could go and get one yourself. Mm. But the two officers don't go and get one themselves. Instead, they seem to encourage, or at least permit, the 16-year-old to do his own test, to drink it. 